This video is going to be about the topic standard error, specifically the standard error of the sample mean. For much of the rest of the class, we're going to focus on the sample mean because we understand the shape of the sampling distribution for the sample mean. That is, the central limit theorem tells us about this. Because we understand the shape of the sampling distribution for the sample mean, we can Wait, via the central limit theorem, we can calculate quantities like this idea of the standard error. For readings on this, I recommend the subsection 4.1.2 out of the Biostat textbook. Hopefully you're watching this video after you have improved your understanding of the sampling distribution. I'm going to do a quick recap of the sampling distribution specifically, and let's make a note of that of the sample mean. Before we start in with the definition of a standard error, and then once we get the definition out of the way, we'll try to do an example in R. OK, so here we go with our recap. In the world of statistics, we are interested in population parameters. And the way we define these parameters is by assuming there is some population distribution of whatever numeric variable it is that we're interested in. And we want to estimate the population mean mu. Now, the way we do that is randomly sample from the population and obtain observations. Now, in order to estimate the population parameter, the mean mu, we add up all our numeric observations and divide by however many there are. And what we get out is the sample mean. That is our best guess of the population distribution mean. So we get out our sample mean mu hat. But what we're starting to learn is that statisticians think of the sample mean as a random variable because it is a calculation dependent on random variables. So we want to abstract away the like observed values themselves and think of each random variable that we sample from the population as an unknown quantity. So if you take all of these unknown quantities and add them all up and divide by however many there are, you don't exactly know what value you get out of the calculation. But in the world of statistics, we understand how that unknown sample mean behaves. We understand, because of the central limit theorem, that the random variable, the sample mean, will be approximately normal because of the central limit theorem. OK. There are other population parameters other than the population mean mu. For instance, there's a population standard deviation, sigma. That is roughly the average width in terms of like squared distance from the mean, the average width of the population distribution. Well, it turns out all distributions have this measure of average width, including the sampling distribution for the sample mean. And in fact, the sampling distribution for the sample mean is this quantity. Whatever the population standard deviation is, sigma, divided by the square root of your sample size. So however many observations you have, let's call that capital letter N. And the average squared width of the sampling distribution of the sample mean is the population standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of the sample size. That quantity right there is the standard error. It describes the variation in the sampling distribution of the sample mean.
So not only does the variation in your sample mean depend on the population standard deviation, that sigma, it also depends on your sample size. And the standard error is actually quite intuitive once you kind of get over the scariness of the idea by putting the square root of the sample size in the denominator, that means as your sample size goes up, your error, your the error in estimation of the population mean goes down. As your sample size goes up, the error in your estimate of the population mean goes down. The more data you collect, the closer to right you're going to be. The more data you collect, the closer to an accurate guess of the population mean you're going to be. OK, let's try this in one more picture before we get into R. So theoretically, there is a population mean, I mean, a population distribution that looks like this. And it's got a population mean mu and there is a population standard deviation sigma. Now, in the world of statistics, we theorize that you sample, 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 sample a bunch of data, and then calculate mu hat. And it's going to be a good but imperfect estimate of the population mean. And it turns out, though it never happens, that if you think of mu hat as a random variable, such that you sample, let's say, 100 data points and calculate one estimate of the population mean, and your friend samples 100 observations from that same population and calculates their own sample mean, and your friend's friend samples 100 observations from the same population, calculates their own sample mean, and let's say you have a 1,000 friends that do this, mu hat will give you all of your mu hats will give you a new distribution. That new distribution will be centered at the true population mean, that is all of your estimates are good estimates of the true population mean. And the variation of all of your estimates will be sigma over the square root of n. This is our standard error. of the sample mean. This quantity describes how much uncertainty there is in our estimate of the population mean. And I'm going to say that whole explanation again. As your sample size, the quantity capital N in the denominator, in the square root of the denominator, as your sample size goes up, the uncertainty in your estimate will go down. And I think that's relatively intuitive. If I only took a sample of size 10 and you took a sample of size 1,000, we would trust your sample much more. Statistically, why we would trust your sample much more is because you'd have a smaller standard error. Because of that square root of the sample size in the denominator, as you collect more data, the uncertainty in your estimate goes down. You are more likely to estimate the truth with a higher sample size. OK, let's jump into an example in R and see if we can create our own plots like this. OK, so here we go. We're going to create a data frame that contains a random sample of size 1001 from, let's say, a population that is normal with a population standard deviation sigma of 100. OK, so now using the library ggplot2, we could Whoops, 
Okay, let's just ignore that and pretend that that's what I typed initially. We could make a density plot of the population. Notice that the population has a standard deviation of 100. So for the most part, the area under the curve is between negative 200 and positive 200. We'll get back to specifics of that a little bit later. Now, what we'd also like to create is a data frame with our sample statistics. Let's say we're going to name all of our sample statistics. That is each of us, uh, let's say each of 1001 of us calculates our own sample mean. I'm going to name those sample means, plural, mu hats. And we're going to get them by sampling 10 observed values from the population that has a standard deviation of 100. From all of those samples, for each of us, we're going to calculate a mean. That is, you're going to sample 10 observed values from a population with a standard deviation, from a normal population with a standard deviation of 100. I'm going to sample, I'm thinking in different columns here, I'm going to sample 10 observed values from a normal population with a standard deviation of 100, and then your friend's friend, and your friend's friend's friend, and your friend's friend's friend, all the way out to 1,001 friends are going to sample 10 observed values from a normal population with a standard deviation of 100. Each of us will calculate a mean, and we'll store that into a vector named mu hats inside a data frame named df sample. Now, we can, and this is rather tricky here, make a density plot of the population. We can make a density plot on that same plot of the sampling distribution of the sample means. And by overlaying the two, we see what it means to have a sample size that's somewhat large. So let me point out the distinction between these two plots. This wider distribution is a representation of the population distribution. Remember, it went from something like negative 200 to positive 200. The skinnier distribution is a representation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Because we sampled 10 observed values each time, we decreased the width of the sampling distribution. Because we sampled 10 observed values, we increased our certainty or decreased our uncertainty in the population mean. We here now have a representation of multiple sample means, each one of which is estimating. In this case, they're all estimating zero. And you can see they're centered about zero and pretty narrow about zero. OK, let me show you what would happen if we increased each of our 1,001 friends' individual samples to size 100? Notice that the sampling distribution of the sample mean previously went from basically 100 to negative 100. If I increase the sample size from 10 to 100 and make my plot again, What we'll see is the population distribution, the very wide and low one, continues to go from about 200 to negative 200. But now, because I increased each of my friends' individual samples, the standard error, that is the variation, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean, is much narrower. It's a little hard to tell what values uh, capture the majority of the area under the sampling distribution. So far, all we can tell is that the sampling distribution is skinnier, 
because we increased our sample size of each of the individual samples. Now, what we get out from the standard error is a direct calculation of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution for the sample mean. What we get out of the standard error is a direct calculation of approximately, on average, how wide this thing is, the sampling distribution is. It goes 100 because that's our population standard deviation. This number is our population standard deviation, so we put that in the numerator, divided by the square root of our sample size. So what we get here is if the population distribution goes from basically negative 200 to positive 200, then the sampling distribution basically goes from negative 20 to positive 20. I extended the standard error out by 2 for reasons I haven't yet explained, but we'll get to that very shortly in this class. For now, you can just trust that the sampling distribution of the sample mean basically goes from negative uh, 20 to positive 20. That is two standard errors up and down from the mean we are estimating, in this case, zero. Two standard errors up gets us to 20, and two standard errors down gets us to negative 20. I'm going to ask you guys to watch this video a few times, especially towards the end here, and try to include a plot like this into your course notes where you choose your own population standard deviation, and then you show me one plot with a relatively small sample size and one plot with a larger sample size, and then explain to me why the sampling distribution of the sample mean shrinks, narrows, as your sample size goes up. You can keep 1,001 friends throughout all your code. I think that will be easiest if you leave this number the same. Keep with the normal population. What you should change is your sample size for each of your friends' samples and the population standard deviation. See if you can replicate a plot like this for a small sample size and then another plot like this for a larger sample size and try to throw in a calculation of the standard error as you go, where the numerator is the population standard deviation and the denominator has your sample size in it.